Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. I'm a little bit tired. Uh, I was out last night, you know, the, the, all these holiday uh, parties and all this stuff was crazy. I actually went to uh, my old area where I grew up yesterday, uh, where I grew up uh, in Brooklyn. It's had a crazy long night. <laughs> you can see it was wiped out. Not getting any younger, but uh, anyway, guys, it's a holiday time. It's awesome time. We are uh, two days away from uh, Christmas, right? Two days away from Christmas. Uh, for all our friends, uh, I want to wish all you guys who are celebrating Hanukkah and Kwanzaa uh, and Christmas and everything uh, in between. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, it's all about love. Remember that. It's all about love. All this stuff about uh, trading and this, that. It's, this is just all the... You know, it's the less leftovers in life, right? This is like the residue. It's all, you know, it's all about uh, living in the moment, uh, being with friends and family, and just being happy. That's the name of the game. So uh, talk about happy, right? The bulls are happy, right? Bulls are very, very happy. Uh, indexes are just, uh, every group is going nuts, right? You have the cues just, just melting up here. You have the semiconductors uh, just going nuts. The biotechs going nuts. You have the, the Russell the IWM going nuts. The market's going nuts, right? The market's going absolutely nuts. And there's something that um, my, my former mentor used to say. He said, if you could survive the first year, right? If you're a new trader and you could survive uh, the first year of trading, you're golden, right? You're golden. Keep this in mind, right? He made that statement during the dot-com era, okay? And when you were in the dot-com era, there's two things that you really didn't need to know. Number one, you didn't know how to trade. You don't. You did. You did not need to know how to trade, and it sounds and it sounds very very odd to say that. But again, if any of you guys, and I know some some of the audience has, for all you guys who did trade during during the dot com era, uh, you really appreciate that this type of market, although it's absolutely phenomenal. If you've been kind of watching these videos now for the last even several days for for this week, you kind of know we're, we're we're you know we're really stamping that historical right that historical market move. And again, you can say. You could love Trump. You could hate Trump. He's the president of this ship. I mean, and it's it, the market is doing incredibly, incredibly well. Um, and the most ironic part about Meyer's statement, my mentor's statement um, about if you could survive the first year, you're golden. That time that you could literally buy anything, okay, don't you, you don't even need a perfect price. And you, you would make money 70, 80 percent of the time because the market would save you. Okay, so even if you bought a hot stock wrong, the next day, because again, there was no strategy. Nobody knew how to trade. If you held it the next day, it would probably gap up $15, $20. So that kind of statement was skewed. Now that we are in a completely different market, and this is 20 years later, completely different market with a whole set of new rules, uh, with all this technology, with all these big macro events that shake the markets because of the algorithms and this, that, the other thing. Um, you, you really need to know what to, you, you're doing. It, it's it's so incredibly important statement. And you know, there's a, there's a myth, you know, there's a myth on um, on Wall Street, or at least you know, at least in, in, in trading. And everybody's heard it. You know, 90% of the traders lose money. It, it, it's not that 90% of the traders lose money. Think about that, guys. There's trillions and trillions of dollars exchanged every day. Okay, it's not 90% of the traders lose money. It's 90% of the traders who are trading less than three years lose money, okay? These are, these are facts, okay? When you're trading less than three years, you are not exposed to anything, okay? Especially if you started trading in one of the most aggressive bull markets that I could remember in a very, very long time. Just understand, this is not normal. This is almost, in a very small way, kind of how I started trading with euphoria, the dot-com era. And then I realized when the dot-com era ended, I didn't know how to trade. I was the absolute worst trader in the world. For two years, I didn't take a cent home from 2001 to 2003. And then the reality set in, and then holy crap, I need, need to know how to trade. So if you're a brand new trader and you caught a piece of this move, you caught a piece of this 2019 ridiculous bull market, first of all, congratulations, that's number one, okay? Because again, not everybody can make that statement. So congratulations, number one. 
Uh, but remember one thing, and I see this now on social media, especially for the last three, four weeks, people are acting like they're re reinventing fire, okay? That they are doing something that they are walking on water, making uh, water into wine, and um, you know anything they crap out is going to be gold. Just understand, we are the byproducts of sentiment. All of us. Okay, it doesn't make a difference who it is. And I had to, and I had to figure that out the hard way after the dot com bubble burst. Okay, when you get into a normal market, and again, this is not normal. This is euphoria. This is euphoria to the highest stages. And again, nothing says euphoria more when you have macro macro news and the market complete shakes off. We had impeachment news, right? We had impeachment news. And if you looked at the futures after Trump got impeached, right? They didn't move. They absolutely didn't move. Again, that shows you how strong the sentiment is. So if you are trading this first year, just understand this is not normal, okay? Uh, this is not something that you could expect every single year. When it comes, it's magical, okay? Um, I think there's nothing wrong of being a byproduct of a specific market, especially when you start trading. Again, I have no... I've never hid the fact that I am a byproduct of the internet craze, okay? And if it wasn't uh, for the internet craze, I wouldn't have, have survived those two years that I didn't make any money. It's just, it's just the reality. I would have flamed out and I would have did something else and you'd have never, uh, you'd have never um, you know, known, even known who I am. So starting out in an area of market sentiment is luck, right? We talk about we make our own luck and our hard work puts on our own luck, but it does give you some sort of solace. There is luck involved in the market. Again, you could have started trading the, during the, you know, the, the mortgage crisis in 2007, right? You could have started trading uh, during 9-11. You could have started trading in the bull market of 2019. So that helps. Um, your probable success or failure does start out with the market. But when, you, when, you, when you're thinking that you are doing something majestic, and you are a byproduct of the market, the market really has an incredible way of humbling you very, very fast when the speed of the market slows down, where the exaggeration of the market slows down, when the channels and you know, they expand three, four, five, six times average to range start to contract, you're gonna feel the effect if you feel that you can walk on water and you are doing something more than the market is actually giving you. And it's a very, very easy habit to fall into. You start, uh, you start sipping your own Kool-Aid. Uh, you believe you are untouchable, and you believe that the gravy train will, will never, will never run out. And that's how I felt during the dot-com era. And then one day I woke up and it was gone. It was absolutely gone. Uh, everything that I thought I accomplished was gone. Okay, and basically I had to start from scratch. And the one thing that I, I said, I think I tweeted this out. A day or two ago and I said I'm excited for 2020 and it wasn't for the same reason that a lot of people are excited like if you're a new trader oh 2020 we're gonna kill it we're gonna do this I'm not excited for that part for, for me every single year um, is business as usual okay I have no expectations I have no predictions uh, when you have no expectations no predictions you have no disappointments again you're, you're trying to remove your uh, emotional attachment to the market year in, year out. But what I'm more excited about 2020 is I made it another year, right? I, I made it another year. And, and now, you know, I look back at my trading career from where I started to kind of where I am. And the most important part and something that I've been, you know, really thinking about more and more is, you know, my ability. And I'm very proud of myself that I've been taking really good responsible losses for over 20 years and that's a big deal okay so if you're trading for the first year okay number one i want to congratulate you okay you made it through that first year it's not as simple as people think okay that first year is your biggest well actually it's the first three years but you, you, know, you have to start somewhere that first year is your biggest obstacle because again you're trying to you know, consume as much good information as possible. Again, with the social media age, I've, I've always said about, about social media, it is the gift and the curse, right? Everybody has a platform to, to have their opinion. Everybody has a platform to have their opinion. So you have to really go through everything. You have to go through all this information to figure out 
what's actually tangible to your development as a professional trader, as an aspiring professional trader. And unfortunately, many traders, you know, they don't digest good information. And I, and I see this all the time. People talk about, well, I'm on my fifth year, I'm on my seventh year, I'm still trying to get profitable. And, and, and that's the byproduct of, unfortunately, and again, you won't know that until you're actually going through it. But if you're, you know, if you're still like year four, year five, year six, and you're still trying to figure things out, unfortunately, looking back at your first three, four years, you've just digested really, really bad information. So if somebody you keep on hearing, especially about with the social media age, if you keep on hearing one plus one equals three, one plus one equals three, that's what's all in your mind. So one plus one equals three, and you're trying to establish your career based on that information. So yes, <clears throat> being in the right place at the right time matters. Uh, being with the right people to kind of get to kind of steer you in the direction where you're supposed to be matters. Starting in a good market that you could actually see some results initially matters. But at the end of the day, it's all about protection of capital, right? And I say this all the time, leading with your shield, not leading with your chin. And again, your first order of business every single year is your goal is to make it to the next year, okay? And the most important part is when you're trying to make it to the next year is self-reflection every single month. What I do is every single month, I look at my sheets and I say, and I wanna look for anything that stands out, not to the upside, but to the downside. Anything that I really messed up, because again, our job every single year is not to be a better trader. Our job every single year is to be a smarter trader, right? Have intelligence, be a smarter adult, be uh, a responsible adult. You know, look at the market uh, with playing devil's advocate. Look at the market with you know without the rose-colored glasses and really self-analyze where you can actually get better. Because a lot of time when you are trading two, three, four years and you're just ready right over that cusp, you're, you're so close. You could taste it, but you just keep on getting frustrated because you just you're you're coming close. You see the finish line. You can see finally the potential, and then you take two steps back. And sometimes when you're in that level, that three, four, five year level, all it takes again, you don't need to go back to that drawing board, right? You don't need to start from scratch. All it takes is a little bit of tweak, right? So if you've been trading, for example, on shorter time frames, the one minute channel, the five minute channel, the fifteen minute channel. This might be the year you finally say, you know what, maybe this idiot Shapiro is right. You know what, what do I have to lose? Let me switch to the 60 minute channel, right? There's 382 one minute candles throughout the day. I only trade six, right? Only six in my world. Uh, again, I know where the movie starts, I know where the movie ends, and the value is in between those candles. This is where we talk about the sneaky pivots. And again, it's all about understanding an edge, where volume is coming in, where the arbitrage is coming in, uh, the probability of the algorithms being on your side, and then rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, without stabbing yourself repeatedly in the, in the process. So if you are in that level, uh, again, in my opinion, again, guys, again, I'm, I'm only one person having an opinion, but if you are especially on that cusp, switch to the 60-minute channels, you will be uh, absolutely shocked, okay? Absolutely shocked and amazed uh, what results you can get when looking at a larger, right, larger time frame, uh, especially in the intraday ranks. Uh, and I think you'll have a really, really good uh, 2020. For all you guys who are brand new traders, uh, again, it's all about being solvent. Digest the proper information, put in that work, look at thousands of charts. So you'll see, even if you're not a trader with me, you'll see there's an arbitrage. There's always an arbitrage in any successful process, always an arbitrage, okay? Um, there's millions of ways to trade, but if you, if you find that edge, right, and you look at the charts, it's right in front of you, okay? Nobody's hiding it, the market's not trying to play tricks on you. It's all in these charts, and once you find that arbitrage, just keep on repeating those steps, you know, over and over and over again. So uh, for all you guys who are going to be trading with me uh, for 2020, uh, I think you'll be very, very happy uh, with the process. Um, and the most important part is you'll start to see uh, all this information that you've taken, you know, and really, really magnified just by tweaking a couple of aspects to what you're doing. So, you know, good luck, everybody. I wish everybody uh, awesome, awesome uh, Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and everything in between. Uh, may God bless you and your family. Uh, so let's talk about quickly uh, the market. Again, nothing really to share. I mean, no news is good news. Macro-wise, 
we're just going higher, right? Uh, this week, everybody asked me, should we trade this week? Is it gonna be slow? Well, you know, Monday, tomorrow's Monday, right? Tomorrow's Monday. Uh, you're going to have, uh, in my opinion, you're gonna have some pretty good value on Monday uh, just because people are still in that euphoric honeymoon stage, right? People just, you know, people are just in love with the idea of stock price appreciation. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Tuesday is a half a day, it's Christmas Eve. Wednesday, the market's closed. People, you know, most, most people are off already, they have been off for the last couple of weeks. Uh, going into the new year. So I, I think just because of the euphoric stage of the market, I think you'll have value. Okay. Um, I, it, it, look, you can have, is, is Tesla going to go up another $40? You know, look, I, who the hell knows? But I, I think you'll have value. Um, I think, you, you know, every day you should give a couple of hours. If you don't see any good value in the first two, two three hours of trading, uh, you could pretty much call it a day. But um, I will be trading. Uh, I will be trading every single day this week, um, and uh, hopefully we'll get some good stuff, right? So uh, let's talk about Friday again. It's just it's just insanity that the, the moves uh, that Tesla has put in, and uh, Netflix has put in, and Nvidia has put in, and even even now Facebook now trying to you know really really bust out. Very very impressive. Okay, very very impressive. And then you have you have nots, right? You have you have nots that every single day I keep on saying, well, this is the day for Amazon. This is the day for Amazon. This is the day for Amazon. This is the day for Amazon, right? It just it just it's it's so weird that there's so many stocks that are completely going nuts. Okay, you have your biotechs, you have your semiconductors, you have everything in sight. And then you have some stocks just not doing anything. You know, for uh, Amazon hasn't done anything. Uh, Square hasn't done anything. Uh, Apple's have a monster, monster run, but you know now it's starting to get a little tired, and you know a little tired, starting to roll around. Uh, Shop has been on a monster, monster run, you know, starting to get a little tired. So again, is this a reflection of things coming in this week? Not necessarily. Okay, again, the rotation uh, in this market has been ridiculous. Okay, and and again, if, when you look at, for example, when you look at a move on Netflix. It's not like Netflix has been rallying for months, okay? This move on Netflix was in the last six days, okay? So you, you, you can still find value in the market. You still can see stocks coming up from, from the bottom of the range, the mid sides of the range, because not everything has rallied, you know, especially not everything has rallied at the same time. So I think going into this week, you'll have value, okay? I'll, get, I'll share some ideas with you guys uh, going into tomorrow. And, and and that's the key. You don't you don't want to you know you don't want to buy Netflix here, even though Netflix does look like it wants to go to like forty five. Like Netflix is a type of stock you want to buy on dips. Okay, you want to buy on severe dips into rising uh, sixty minute channels. A stock like Nvidia, who's who's it's been really really good trader. I mean I've caught Nvidia several times this week. Uh, really really good trader. I mean again you can't buy the highs. You got to wait for some sort of dip. You got to wait for some sort of rising support. Either the five. Uh, five day on the 60 minute for, for value entries. But again, with this type of tape, you could find some good uh, diamonds in the rough that are not overextended, that are not, you know, 5% away from its quote unquote pivot or uh, breakout. And you could still do very, very well. But I think the further stocks go and appreciate from their pivots, from their quote unquote breakouts, the harder you will have finding success. Because again, gravity is real. Okay. Again, I'm not, I don't speak from, uh, from the bear or bull uh, point of view, I speak from reality. When a stock is 5, 10, 15 percent away from its breakout level, the chances of the stock going higher become smaller and the chances of you uh, succeeding in that interval gets shorter and shorter. So you, you have to look for value. You have to look for stocks that are coming out of long digested ranges and that's where uh, the value is going to be. So let's talk about Friday's session. Um, again, you have some good stuff here. The one thing that was crazy about Friday, I just it just dawned on me now. We, we talked about it at the open. Did you guys remember? Did, did you guys notice that crazy volume? And again, I knew there was. I think it was quad expiration. I knew there was a rebalancing, all that stuff. But did you guys? And excuse me, the rebalance was on Thursday. But did you guys see that the massive moves? It was like the stocks at the open either had a flash crash or like a flash move up. So if you look, for example, on Facebook, okay, look, look what happened Friday on Facebook. I want to show you guys this. So this is what happened. It was literally like a flash, flash move up and a flash move down. This is in seconds, right? Flash moves up, flash move down. Same thing happened to Amazon. They brought it to like 
1813 and they brought it down to like, excuse me, they brought it down to like 1803 and then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden back down to the 1780s. And you saw that with a lot of names and it really, really got scary. And I actually started my day after 10 o'clock. I just wanted to see that volume kind of die down a little bit. I wanted to see kind of stock prices stabilize. So if you guys notice that open on Friday was absolutely crazy. I, mean, I know a lot of us were looking at it like, what the hell is going on here? So I actually sat the open uh, out on Friday. Okay, um, I waited for half. I waited for that first half hour uh, to get my day uh, going. But that was just some really, really bizarre stuff. You guys remember that? Uh, if you if you got caught in that, it's a very, very ugly scene. Um, you know, I don't I don't even know what the news was or what happened there. But I saw a lot of names either go up and down very quickly or just go down or up. Uh, very, very aggressively. And when something like that happens, when market structure kind of uh, throws you a curveball, the last thing you want to do is participate until the kind of things slow down. Uh, so let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about Friday's action. Uh, Baidu, again, was a perfect example of a flash up and down. Uh, it broke above 29 and it went to 27, like in three seconds, like really, really scary stuff. Uh, Amazon, you know, just keeps on getting close, man. I actually had a buy stop over 1,800. I left a little early and I, I looked and it traded like this 179.50. I was like, oh, thank God I didn't get, I didn't get triggered into this thing. Um, but again, just something wrong with this thing. KRTX went nuts. Uh, congratulations for all you guys. Um, I thought KRTX had a shot at 83, 84. Um, if you look at KRTX's chart, here is the daily chart uh, on KRTX. We talked about that 79 break. And once it broke 79, it would trade it right to like eight, almost 86. Big, big move on KRTX. Again, these bios have been nuts. And this stock, very, very oddly, it took such a long distribution. It took literally three weeks for this thing to kind of wake up again. But now it did. And if this thing starts reclaiming 86 uh, in the next few days, again, I'm not saying it's going to go back to 150. But you could definitely get some more uh, upside probability on KRTX on any close above that 86 level. So that was a big move. Big, big move there. Uh, Roku, there was a fast, quick trade on, on Roku, uh, 141. I knew it was going to stop at 40, like roughly around 42 because that was supply. If you look at the daily chart on Roku, you can see where supply was, right? 142.05. Uh, here was the pivot at 140. Here, here's the pivot at 141. And it just went right to supply. Again, understanding supply zones is going to be absolutely crucial uh, in your development, even if you do not trade pivots. It had nothing to do with me. If you don't understand where stocks potentially could stop, you're trading blind. I'm telling you, you're trading blind. So next time around, when you're, when you're a new trader and you turn, ask me to turn around and say, how come I have so many lines uh, on my charts, right? The lines, the, the silly little lines. Well, the reason that is because I could identify where emotional sellers, where technical sellers will meet emotional buyers and vice versa. So it's very, very uh, important to understand why these things, they kind of matter and they kind of matter very, very uh, importantly, um, I still like SE. Okay, uh, didn't break, uh, didn't break that twenty nine thirty level. I still like it for this week. Uh, good consolidation uh, after this move. It just needs to confirm this whole move here. I, I think once it starts building above like that thirty nine thirty thirty nine fifty area, I think there will be more price action there. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Facebook again, just flash up, flash down. It took out that two hundred six seventy, went to like almost two hundred eight, and like. Three seconds later, it was like a 205. Just just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Netflix, again, continues to be a monster. And again, I said this because of the reason why we talked about, you know, buying stocks extended away from uh, their previous pivot. So I said 335 needs to build. Again, experienced traders only. If it stalls out at that whole number, just use a 50 cent maximum risk. Because uh, again, anything could reverse. And we saw that. Uh, so here was the Netflix pivot. Uh, 335 was right here. Right, 335 was right here, and once it broke 335, it had you know big push to almost uh, 398. Excuse me, 338. Uh, so big move there on Netflix. Uh, Match.com, right? We talked about Match.com on the previous night's video, uh, our morning strategy, and uh, you know had a big move. I said there's a shot against the 81, uh, 78 needs to build. Uh, here was Match.com. Right here was match.com. Here was the 78, and it went right to 81 and change. So, again, good job for all you guys uh, who caught that as well. Uh, yeah, so I fought with Tesla three times. Okay, I, I fought with Tesla three times. So, I, I thought there was a shot the stock can get to 398. Okay, and had a big run, had a, put in a blow off candle, and I said if this thing starts building below, 
406. I, I think it could flush, okay? I, I thought there was a high probability it could get the 398, okay? So I shorted it the first time, okay? I shorted it the first time. Unfortunately, I wasn't, I'm not gonna be trading Tesla with any size at a short side. Um, so I, I shorted it and it went down like a dollar fifty, dollar seventy, dollar fifty or so. And here, let me show you the pivot. So I shorted Tesla, right? I shorted Tesla off this 406 sneaky pivot, right? And I knew it was gonna get down to three oh uh, to this 403.50 area before the bounce because that was the next support. The problem was I, I didn't take enough, so I couldn't take any profits. Uh, at least I didn't want to take any profits because I, I did think there was a shot it could get down to 398. Um, and if you look at the low, the low was 400. So you, you could you could just see my frustration right now. Um, so I shorted it, went down like a dollar fifty, and then it started moving back up. And I thought it was bouncing a little too much, so I wanted to. I only wound up making like 30, 35 cents. I'm getting like 30, 35 cents on the trade. Because again, I, you know, I'm not going to sit there for the bounce all the way back to 420 because I do believe it will go to 420. I just wanted to get, get some cash flow, just bigger cash flow than I had. Uh, so then I went in the second time, right? Went in the second time and it took out the lows and started building, started building. And it just didn't break. It just, it just way too many dip buyers. So I wound up losing on my second trade, I wound up losing like a little less than a buck, right? So I was down like, and again, I'm not trading size. And that was the part I, I always stress. I, I always stress the idea of, you know, ha having proper tier size so you can scale out. So that was one of the things like when, when you have conviction on a trade, but you don't want to size into that trade because you're afraid of their trend. And again, I was right to be afraid of that trend. And then the stock ultimately works out. It's such a shitty feeling because you're right. You were positioned right the right way. You had the right read, but you completely mis, 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 misjudged the trade. So the third time I went in, because I saw that level just couldn't hold. So the third time I went in, um, I finally started taking profits on it. So I took like a dollar thirty. Um, I took like a dollar thirty or so. Um, I took like a dollar thirty or so, and it just wouldn't crack. You know, I, I, I was up like like two and change in the stock. And I said, you know what, there's gonna be another two points in the stock. And it just didn't crack. So I wound up um, on my last uh, on my last tier, I wound up making like 30, 40 cents. So it took like three trades to make some money on it. Um, it was a little bit frustrating because I, I was just sitting there, I'm like, why are these dip buyers, right? Like why are they dip? I can understand if you wanna defend $400, but why are you defending 405? Why are you defending 403? Why the hell are you defending 402? Why are you defending 401? Why are you defending these random levels? And that's why like, the frustration kept in and the longer and longer the trade took, it just took so damn long that after it held 400, I just, you know, I just gave up, uh, took my money in the trade and kind of moved forward. And obviously, you know, the, you know, the stock woke up and went back to 406. And look, the, the ironic part about the, the ironic part about uh, Tesla is I, I think they will get it to that 420 level, the whole 420 secure. So I think it will get there. And a lot of people turn around and say, well, I'm going to short it there. Well, why there? I mean, like it, it's almost the same reason as saying I'm going to buy it because it's going to go to 420. I, look, you have to trade these things on technical areas. You can't guess. I think the euphoric nature of this market are, are, pe are putting people in a position that they're freely putting their money on the table, on the line, and think there's going to be no ramifications. If you think Tesla doesn't get to 420, make sure you're entering the proper way. Not because the stock is at 410. Oh, it's another 10 points. Maybe, maybe not. Again, there's no guarantees on anything. So if you're going to trade Tesla, trade it on those dips, man. Trade it on the dips, either the five-day moving average or on 60-minute support for entries. And if those levels don't hold, at least you have a concentrated area where you can get out uh, with very, very limited damage you know, compared to you're buying it at 409 because you think it's going to 420. Why? Because you think it's going to 420 because you heard some schmuck on social media say it's going to 420. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But again, are you really that egotistical? You, is your bravado, is your ego that big to think that you can walk on water and nothing's going to happen? Technicals matter. Entries matter. Uh, safety matters. Controlling risk matters. Staying solvent matters. So don't just freely put your money on the line and think there's going to be no ramifications. So again, I do think it's going to go to 420, but I think you need safe areas to kind of enter the trade. A couple of days of selling would not hurt, would stabilize the stock and exhaust some sellers in the way up for the next move up. So going into this week, again, unless something really changes, you have to be, in my opinion, you still have to be bullish, uh, individual names. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas for... Uh, for tomorrow, right? Um, I like Workday. 
Um, I like Workday. Workday is a really good stock to trade off bottoms. You can tell when it, when it comes out of a range, it will give you a multiple day run. You can see here, multiple day run. And you can see here, it's forming the same way. I, I think if Workday starts building, again, I'm not talking about it's going to 190, but for, for, you know, for, for a trade, you know, for a trade with some, some decent upside, I think if Workday confirms this channel here and starts building 168, I don't see why I can't get to 172 and a half, 173 on this channel. This could be a perf perfect move, especially coming off a of bottom. That's again, that's where I'm looking uh, for value. Um, I kind of like this TA, right? Uh, even though it had a big, big move, it's consolidating nicely. And what I like about it, it's a whole number, right? So when you have a whole number and you, you know the volumes and have the whole number, you don't have a lot of risk here. So the stock closed at 1596, you're buying it at 16. If that 16 doesn't hold, you can risk a dime on this thing. You can literally risk a dime. Again, this is the first close over supply. And if it starts going, you got a lot of upside uh, with like a very, very small risk. This is like a free trade. I mean, literally, it's, it's, if it doesn't hold 16, goes back to red. Why would you sit in this trade? And this is what I mean about a free trade. You talk about risk versus reward. It's reward versus risk in this in this case. So stock close at 1596. If it doesn't build properly over 16, just get it out of the stock. Uh, you know, the 1590s, it's, you know, it's a very, very small uh, cost of doing business for a potential good upside. So keep an eye on that. Um, I kind of like this Vico. I haven't traded Vico. Man, I haven't traded probably Vico in, 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 in a decade. Uh, you know, big, big move up, right? Big, big move up here uh, in November, came in the next month. It's finally oversupply. So again, another case scenario of a whole number entry. Uh, keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building uh, 1490, 15, you could start making its way back up uh, to the 1570s area. And ultimately, uh, if you're swinging the stock into the 17s, uh, that looks pretty good. Um, Cerner looks pretty good. There was some private equity talk on Cerner uh, a couple of days ago. You know, keep an eye on this thing. If, you know, if Cerner starts building above like this, this whole supply here, 7350 or so, uh, it could go. It could go. So keep an eye on that as well. So yeah, I have some other ideas. Obviously, all the beta stuff we'll talk about at Morning Strategy tomorrow. Uh, guys, I want to wish you guys an awesome, awesome holiday uh, season. Uh, hopefully, you guys are in the direction of you know getting to where you want to be as a trader. You know, it doesn't take it doesn't take a lot of you know it doesn't take a lot of energy to put yourself in the right mind frame you know for the success, but it does take a lot of work, and that's and that's the key. Uh, to any business, especially the hardest business in the world. So guys, have an awesome, awesome Christmas, Kwanzaa, uh, Hanukkah, and Happy New Year, and God bless, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.